I'll send this image out to y'all, but I've said this, but this is just sort of the breakdown of the questions that you'll have. I'll send this out to you on an email just to remind you. But here we have estimate string. You have two questions from each of those. Uh, dimensional analysis, you have two questions. One question for significant figures. One for standards of measurements. Two for units. That means like conversion of units. You have one without powers and one with powers. Uh, kinematics, you have three calculation type word problems. And then you have three conceptual problems. Problems like we had on the concept test. I uploaded that it's on the website. Graphs qualitative. That's where you know I show you the curve graph or the straight line graph and ask you to describe is it increasing speed, decreasing speed, is it positive, negative, is it acceleration positive or negative, that sort of thing. Uh, then graphs quantitative. That's where I have you actually calculate the slope of the graph or calculate the area of the graph as it's relevant. Uh, vectors, calculations, you have two where you do the calculations. And I told you all this last time, we're going to wrap this up today. But you'll have one question where I just have you find the x or y component of a vector. And then another question where I give you two vectors, one of which is off axis, and I ask you to find the, the sum of those two vectors, either the magnitude and or the direction. We're going to wrap up one today, but we've done some. And then your quiz, which is due tonight at midnight, it is uh, it has several of those types of problems with the vectors. So if you can do the quiz well, then you should be good. That's good practice for those questions. And then also conceptual problems. Uh, we'll, we did some of those last time, like in the concept test, thinking about where the vector is, what quadrant it's in, what's the possible angle for the vector, uh, how the vectors are oriented, like in the concept test like we did last time. And we'll look at some more like that today. OK? Test, I think, is 27 questions long. Um, we'll do it. Where are we doing it? Tell okay. Child Auditorium. You go into the lobby, the big fancy lobby, and there will be seating charts posted around the room, and you can uh, you know, find your seating. It's like a movie theater, or I guess movie theaters don't have numbers anymore, but it's like a theater where the numbers are on the seats, so you can find your seats. Okay? Any questions? We'll have time for content questions afterwards, after we've been in front of you. Okay? Multiple choice, or is there no specific Almost Almost multiple. Yeah. Okay, but beware, because multiple choice questions don't have to be easy. In fact, usually, I know what mistakes you're going to make. And so usually when I go through and I, I make up the answers, I'll get the correct answer, of course. And then I'll make all those mistakes that you're likely to make, and those will be the incorrect answers. So just because you get an answer doesn't mean that it's correct. Okay. And then sometimes I just multiply all the numbers together, because I don't know somebody to do that. You just multiply all the numbers that are in the problem, and I'll get a bad answer. You'll see some questions that will be familiar. So I could take a few questions from the concept test, and maybe even from some old tests. Concept tests and Right. The concept tests are the like the PowerPoint slides, the red or the blue PowerPoint slides. They are in the back of your book. They're also online under concept tests on the website. All right. That is your question. <coughs> Any other questions about the format of the exam? What to expect? Yeah. Uh, Tell me your name. Connor. 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 Yeah, Connor. Do you want credit? No partial credit. Sorry. All right. Is there, you know what an exam is? Your opportunity to excel. That's an exam. <laughs> your opportunity to show all the stuff that you know. <coughs> Not going to be an easy an exam, but I think it'll probably be the easiest all semester. So you really want to do your best on this exam, best you can. Okay? Uh, let's wrap up this problem, and then we can go and look at some old questions. And if you just say, you know, I'm a little shaky on dimensional analysis, then we'll do some of that. If I'm shaky on trig, I'll do some of that. We'll have a little review right here, a little review party. So we left off, we were looking at this. Now this has three different vectors. As I said, you'll have two vectors, so it won't be as complicated, but you still take the same steps. And the first step that you do is what we did, is you find the x and y components. We have to be careful because sometimes the x and y component will be negative, and you have no reason to think that just from looking at the numbers. Like, for example, this vector b 
because it was below the positive x axis, you have to read the words. I always like to draw a picture. So vector b is here. And since it's here, I know that the x component is on this x axis, so the x component is positive. And the y component is going to be on this axis, axis, so the y component will be negative. So as you're reading through the problem, you need to ask yourself, is the x or y component positive or negative? And then you'll need to take that into account. Now the next step is to find the x and y components of r. And the rx component is going to equal to ax plus bx plus cx. So I'm going to add up those three x components. ax was 1 plus 3 plus negative 2. And that will give me the x component of r. So that's 4 minus 2. It's 2 units long. And then the y component, in a similar way, is ay plus by plus cy. And that's equal to 2 plus negative 4 plus 5. So that's 7 minus 4. That's equal to 3. So these are x and y components of uh, r. Already we know that the angle for this vector is going to be between what two values? Just from looking at these, my angle for r has to be in which quadrant? 1, 2, 3, or 4. Which quadrant is this going to be in? It's going to be in the first quadrant. That's correct. Because this is positive and this is positive. If this were negative, what quadrant would it be? It would be 2, right. So if it were negative, if the x component was negative, then the vector would be, you know, this would be my x, this would be my y, the vector would be here. But r, the x component is positive, so this is r. If the y component only was negative, it would be in which quadrant? 1, 2, 3, or 4. Think about it. It would be in 4, right? So if the y component was negative, it would be here. Know your quadrants, know your angles too, right? 0 to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 270, 270 to 360. You have to know that. Okay, now to find the magnitude here, I know Rx and Ry. This is Rx. This is Ry. We have 2 and 3. To find the magnitude of R, we say the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared. That's square root of 4 plus 9, square root of 13 is... Uh, 3.6 units. And then to find this angle, theta, we say the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent are 3 over 2. And then that's equal to um, 56 degrees. All right. Now let's say instead of doing the sum of those three vectors, if instead we wanted to do this difference, a minus b minus c, it would work out much the same way. Sorry, did I go too quickly from there? Okay, I'm sorry. If I'm doing A minus B minus C, it's going to work out exactly the same way, except here instead of doing AX plus BX plus CX, we're going to have AX minus and minus because I'm subtracting B and C. So, may I go down now? Yeah. All right, so I have AX minus bx minus cx. That's going to be 1 minus 3 minus negative 2. See how it's different from the one we did up here? I just replace these with negatives because I have negatives here and here. I'm subtracting those vectors instead of adding them. And so that's 1 minus 3 plus 2. 0, right? Yeah, 0. And then ry would be ay minus by minus cy, that's uh, 2 minus negative 4, minus 5, and that's equal to 1. Well, gosh, I mean, we know where that is, right? Our magnitude, a 0 and a 1, what's my magnitude? It's just 1, and my angle is 90 degrees, right? Because if I think about where my x and y components are, it has no x component, and the y component has a value equal to 1, so that is my vector. 1 unit or whatever it is uh, at 90 degrees from the origin, from the x-axis.
You'll have two vectors, and I'll ask you for the sum of them. Uh, it is a sum. I'm not doing a difference. You'll have to do a sum on the test. Can I go down from here? All right. Good job, football team. <coughs> really love to see a win, but man, that was a good, good job. Where's this time with it? Tyler? Oh, there you are. Yeah, and also, I'm, you know I have a ball player? Is it just you, Tyler, in the class? Yeah, and then our cheerleaders, too. There's our cheerleaders. Yes, Mackenzie. And all of our band folks, and every, all the athletes. You can, okay, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> all right, um, let's see. So, let's say I have this. Uh, you know what? We're going to skip this. It's another addition problem, and it's more complicated than we'll see on the test. And I think it's probably better for us to spend time reviewing for the test instead. So instead of sort of driving vectors home, we'll just skip this and we're going to come back to vectors in Chapter 4. In fact, later in Chapter 3, we'll see it again. But for now, you have what you need for the test. Add in two vectors and take in the x or y component of a vector. But let's, um, let's start... By looking at the exam in the back. And then we'll look at some other exams too, just to give you a little extra practice here in class. But for now, let's, uh, I'm just going to sort of scroll through some of these. And I'll take a look. If, if any of them jump out at you, or maybe they already have jumped out at you, then please let me know, okay? But if none of them jump out at you, then I'm going to pick some questions. We'll work them as a class, and I'll sort of see where you are and how you stand on some of these. So we have dimensional analysis. These are estimation problems, significant figures, standards, trig, uh, here's some units, conversion of units here and here. Uh, some of these are kinematics problems here and here. Here's some of our qualitative type problems where we're looking at graphs describing their motion. Some conceptual problems regarding 14 through 16 regarding uh, kinematics. This is a graphing problem. You'll have a quant this is a quantitative graphing problem. What is the velocity at t equal 8.5 seconds? Some more qualitative graphs in number 21. Here's another quantitative graph. As I said, I think I said four of those quantitative graphs. Uh, and this one is asking for distance, so you have to approach it slightly differently. Acceleration. And then here's your uh, vectors. Is this Wednesday's test? I didn't print Wednesday's test, did I? It has all the same material. The questions will be different. But if you can do well on this test without any help at all, you know, you can probably do pretty well on this coming exam. It's not going to be exactly the same. The questions will be similar but different. Okay? So which of these stands out to you? Oh, how about this one? You're not going to have this question, unfortunately. Maybe later y'all can decide who it is. Joy, do you think, it's, you think you're the favorite? No. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Sure. Thanks. What did you say? I'm not saying. That was a whole different class. Y'all are different batch of students. Okay. Um, all right. I'll just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna work through. I'll step through with it. Listen, a lot of you are going to miss these questions, and it's unfortunate you shouldn't miss these questions. You should be able to get these because, um, well, they look complicated, but they're not really that complicated. It really is just plugging in your units properly, knowing what to do with our constants, um, and then doing algebra. So hopefully, I want you to get these questions, uh, not, not miss them. I want you to get them all. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the 3 pi, because that doesn't impact the units at all. And then this one, I can simplify a bit. You can't always do this in these problems, but you can in this one. And then that makes this problem a lot easier. How can I simplify it? The what and the what? I can get rid of, uh, no, I can cancel some things, what I'm saying. Did you say it, Marcia? 
I have these on both sides. What else do I have on both sides? Yeah. M. So I can get rid of the M's and the V's. So what I have on the left-hand side is 1 over T. And then what I have on the other side is uh, B over A. And what I want to know is what are the units for B? Uh, maybe the best way for you to approach this is just solve for B and then find out what are the units for B. I can solve for B by cross-multiplying. So I get B times T equals A. And then I divide both sides by T, A over T. And so the units for B will have the same units of it as acceleration over time. Or excuse me, uh, yeah. So I'll have meters per second squared over T, which is seconds. And I can rewrite this as meters per second squared times one over seconds. And so that's going to be meters per second cubed. That is going to be B right here. You might approach it a slightly different way. You might say 1 over T equals B times 1 over A. And then you could say, well, 1 over T is 1 over seconds. 1 over A is seconds squared over meters. And then you just look at that and you ask, well, how what would B have to be in order to make this whole side 1 over seconds? You need a seconds cubed in the denominator. We get rid of this and leave the seconds, and then you need a, uh, an M in the numerator to cancel out here. If you do it that way, that's fine too. But this is a little more systematic in the way that you go through. Joy, was that, that help? Yeah, thanks for asking because it seems like it should be like everybody should get these questions right, but I find that a lot of people miss them. William? You could, yeah, okay, you could do it that way. Yeah, if you wanted to. That would probably be easier. Multiply both sides by A. I like possible. Whatever. Okay. Okay. What else? Take a, a moment and look through. If you don't choose one, I will. Thirteen. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, well, let's step through it because this is an important problem. It's especially important when we move on into Chapter 3, and so you might see something similar. Not, not the same problem, but something similar in the exam. Uh, I throw a bottle up, initial speed of 30 meters per second. I want to know its maximum height. Right. So the way I approach this is I say, I know that V is equal to 0 at the top. V is equal to 0 at the top. And because it's equal to zero at the top, and that gives me some information, I can say here that at the top, v equals zero. I know the initial velocity, v naught, and I know the acceleration. And so I can solve then for the time. And that's what we did here. Because I know v, v at the top is zero, I can solve for the time. So I know that at the top, the time is equal to three seconds. And then if I know the time is three seconds there, then I can use my other kinematics equation to solve for what is the height at that position. Uh, some other things you could ask. Um, well, I could ask you, what is, the, what is the total time that it's in the air? What is the total time that this object's in the air? Six seconds. Remember our basic ideas for, for uh, tree call motion? The time up is always equal to the time down. So it takes three seconds to go up, three seconds to go down. I could also ask you just what is the what is the velocity at any given time? I could ask you the velocity at two seconds. You know how you do that? Do you want to know the velocity at two seconds? You just plug in two, right? These are just functions. So if I wanted to know the velocity at two seconds, I would say v is equal to v naught, that's 30, plus negative 10. That's my acceleration times 2. And then V then at 2 seconds is equal to 30 minus 20 or 10 meters per second. Notice it's positive. That means it's on the ascent, not on the descent. If it was, say, 4 seconds, which is after it reaches the top, the velocity would come out negative. Thank you. That's a good question. You will see a free fall question. That falls under those kinematics calculations problems. What else on that in that test? Yeah, uh, Olivia. 
18. You're going to have one something similar to this. It won't be exactly the same, but it'll be very similar, you know, a different graph. Um, so here, I want you to take this position versus time graph and tell me which of these velocity versus time graphs represents it. The way you do this is you look at the slope of the position versus time graph and ask yourself, what is the slope doing? And whatever the slope is doing should be represented here. So for example, or not for example, on this problem, here I have a negative slope and it's small. And then down here I have a negative big slope. It gets bigger. So it's traveling in the negative direction and it's speeding up. Traveling in the negative direction and it's speeding up. And so I want to ask myself, which of these graphs represent that? <coughs> Remember, my origin is here. So this is a speed of zero. Negative is below it. This is a small negative velocity. This is a big negative velocity. Oh, it's A is the answer. Because it starts out small and it speeds up, but in the negative direction. Now, you're going to get tripped up because often we look at a graph like this and we say, oh, the velocity is decreasing. But it's not decreasing. It's decreasing in the negative direction, but it's actually speeding up. The negative gives direction. It doesn't give magnitude. So you'll see a question like that. Make sure that you're good on it. There are other variations of it in other tests, and we did some in class. Is that clear, Olivia? So I just... Why it's not D? Right, and about half of you would probably answer D too. That's why it begins there. But you want to think here that D is, is negative, but it's big. And we don't usually think of being, you know, far down on the Y axis as being a big value, but it is. I mean, put some numbers on it, right? Uh, if I put zero here, negative 5 here, negative 10. So this object is traveling negative 10 meters per second here, negative 5 meters per second, 0 meters per second. So it's actually decreasing in speed as that line goes up. But that's not normally how we draw graphs like that. That's why it's confusing, because the sign represents a direction. It's not supposed to be confusing, but I want you to understand that that sign represents direction, not magnitude. Thank you. That's a that's a subtle problem, but it's it's a good one that a lot of you will miss. But now you won't, right? Now you'll get it right. So, all right. What else? I'll take a little look. I know that many of you are having difficulty with some of these problems. Just want to pick those out. Yeah. What is it? 19. And remind me your name again. Lee. Lee. But that's not what it is on my sheet, is it? It's some type one, but Lee, right? So I'm still trying to all right. know all your names. This second, Connor. Connor. Yeah. Ah, the sign of the acceleration. I'm sorry, I was going to say that. Uh, so what would the sign of the acceleration be? Well, you think about it in your head, what do you think it is? Uh, but our answer was A, right? It's increasing to negative direction. The velocity is negative and it's speeding up. Don't think, don't say anything. The velocity is negative and it's speeding up. What do you think the acceleration is? Is it positive or negative? Yeah, yeah they're, all, they're all mixed up. Can you think of a thing that is moving in the negative direction and speeding up? Right, when you drop something. Uh, so that has what type of acceleration? Negative. So it would have a negative acceleration. Juliana, do you have a question?
Yeah, the, if I were to draw the A versus T graph, we don't usually deal in those because we deal in constant acceleration. But if I were to draw the acceleration versus time graph, it would look like this. Right? That's not a zero acceleration. That's a, a negative 10 acceleration or whatever the value is. Is that clear? Connor. Yeah. And Lee, which one did you say? 19? Is this one okay? Oh, good. Yeah, I think you probably need a little more practice on this one. So go back and look at the old test and try out some of those. I think I've told you all this, but let me just say it again. With the old test, the solutions are online. Y'all know that. Um, but I find that it's helpful if you work through it first on your own without any help from the solutions. And then you can just check your answers, the answers on, on the last page, and see which ones you got wrong. And then you'll find out, okay, I don't really understand these graphs very well. And then you can go and look at the solution for that. Try it again on your own, and then print out another test and try a slightly different variation of it. Okay? I have pulled, too, a few tests from your quizzes, from your OpenStax quizzes. So they aren't the same numbers, but they're very similar questions. Y'all still have access to those, right? Can you still see the questions with the right answers? They give you feedback on them? Any sort of feedback? No? Okay. All right. I really appreciate your patience with that. It's I think that they made a lot of changes in the last week based on your comments, those of you that have sent me emails about various issues. It's a good thing. It's a, That project is, is hoping to provide textbooks for for free for thousands of uh, undergrads. Okay, this one, please. Okay, what is the velocity of t equal 8.5 seconds? When you get a graphing problem like this, the first thing you need to do is to check what is on the axes. Because depending on what's on the axis or on the axes is going to tell you how you approach this problem. And as you know, sometimes you'll get, say, a velocity versus time graph. And if it's a velocity versus time graph and I ask you the velocity at t equals 7.5 seconds, then you do that a lot differently than you would this particular problem. You just read it straight off the axis. But on this problem, it's a position versus time. And I'm asking you the velocity at t equals 7.5 seconds. 8.5, excuse me. So at 8.5 seconds, which is right here, I need to find the slope of this line. The slope is rise over run. I'm going to look over here. I'm about minus 16 to 0. So the rise is plus 16. That is 0 minus negative 16, which is equal to plus 16. I know the slope has to be positive just because, you know, it's a positive slope line. The run is 1. Rise over 1. Run is 16 meters per second. What if I gave you a different one? Like, what if I said at 2.5 seconds? Well, at 2.5 seconds, it would be right here. I would find the slope there. It would be rise over run. Rise is 10. It's actually negative 10 divided by 2. And so this velocity would be negative 5 meters per second. What would it be at 4.5 seconds? At 4.5 seconds, what is the slope? Zero. OK? Again, if this was a velocity versus time graph, it would be much different. If I asked the velocity versus time at, say, t equal 5.5 seconds, or 6 seconds, it would just be minus 16. Be careful with that. Usually, usually you're going to be finding the slope for the area, but not always. Okay, Lee? Good. What else on this test? We can look at some others, too. Yeah. Let me tell you, I, I sort of I do these a little bit differently now. This is the sig fig problem, number five. Uh, and it's going to be a little bit different because I realize 
depending upon the order of operations that you choose, you might not get this answer. Is that what you're asking? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, let me uh, let me address that question first. So here, I do this times this. Actually, you can do this first, but I'm going to do this times this. And so that'll be three sig figs here, four sig figs here. So I carry three sig figs. And then I divide by a three sig fig number. And so my final answer to that, three sig figs. So I look for the answer C, which just has three sig figs. OK, so yours is going to be a little bit different. I've done this before on tests, but instead of giving you the answers, I'm going to say, how many sig figs should the answer have? All right, and so I would have, you know, five, four, three, two, one, and the answer would be three. Is that clear? Make sure you know how to add in addition as well. Addition and subtraction. Uh, with addition, you keep the lowest number of, I always get this confused, which is it with addition? Number of decimal places. Is that right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, there's decimal places. And then with multiplication and division, you keep the lowest number of significant figures. And you follow the order of operations. So you do your uh, stuff in parentheses first, then you do your multiplication and division. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, then you do your multiplication and division, and then you do your division. But if it's in parentheses, you always do that first. Got that back. Know your standards. Uh, be careful because and they, I gave you not only the current standards, just a second, Maggie, I gave you not only the current standards, but I gave you all the old standards too. So just be careful you keep all those straight in your mind. Maggie? Okay, this is another graphing problem, but it's a little bit different. Uh, I gave you the velocity versus time graph. I'm asking you to tell me the distance that it's traveled between t equals 0 and t equals 4 seconds. So first of all, recognize its velocity versus time. And then I'm looking for distance. If I'm looking for distance on a velocity versus time graph, I do what? The slope or the area? Area. Area. The area. Right. So I find the area. But not the whole graph, because I'm just looking for between t equals 0 and 4. So it's like integrating from 0 to 4 seconds. So I'm only going up to here, and I want to know the area. Next, on this, you want to check your axes. Remember, don't count the squares, because the squares aren't always one by one. In this case, they are one by one. I have one unit here and one unit here. So each square represents one meter. So I just count the squares then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, this one is about 8. All of these about together are 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, about 12 and a half or so. So 13 meters. They're about 12 and a half squares. The answers will be different enough that you're not going to be confused. If you count them to within a square or two, you'll be able to pick out the right answer. Well, it is. You're you're calculating the area, yeah. so uh, but we're just counting the squares because each square is one by one, is one unit by one unit, and so each square represents one meter. Just make sure you remember, because if you look back at some of the old tests, sometimes you have graphs that have triangles in them. Just remember your area of a triangle. What is the area of a triangle? One half base height. One half base times height. Just remember, I always like to think of a square. This is my base. This is my height. This is half of that. So it's one half base times height. If you have a triangular shape, or if you're a rectangular shape, it's you know base what times height. I'm oh, sorry, wait. Could you repeat? Oh, uh, on this one, when you don't have straight lines, if the units were different. Say instead you had uh, 0, 2, 4, 6, like that. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, so in this case, if these were the units, each square would be worth 2 meters. And so the answer would not be 13, but it would be 26 meters. Oh, so you would answer B, 25. What if they were going to double right there and then one across like that? 
they would have been doubled down here. Yes, they would have been single down there and double on top because then you can't just count them together. Right? Like for y axis, the y cube with the x axis on the platform. You can't just really count the squares, right? It's been some you, yeah, that's what I just did. So if, if my y axis was doubled instead, like if my units were 0, 2, 4, 6, and then down here was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, you're, that's what you're asking, I think. Isn't it? That's a good question. Because usually, if you're, I mean, if your unit, if your axes aren't the same, you know, you'll have, say, by two here and by one here. If this is the case, each square represents two times one represents two meters. And so you still count the squares, but you multiply it all by two. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Which one? Good practice for y'all. Okay. Oh yeah. So here, what is the acceleration at t equal 3.5 seconds? Well, I'm looking for acceleration from a v versus t graph. I'm looking for the slope. So at t equal 3.5 seconds, which is right there. Now, before I answer anything, let's just go look at my options. I can get rid of some of these. Which ones can I get rid of? If I'm right here, I can get rid of the positive one and the zero one. So I can get rid of A and C right away because they were zero and positive. I know that my slope has to be negative. And then I draw a tangent line. Uh, something like that. You might draw it differently every time. Find the slope of it, that's 5 divided by 1, which would be about negative 5, but oh, it looks like negative 6. Pick the closest thing. You'll be able to get it close enough so that you can discern the right answer on drawing the tangent. China, is that clear? You sure? The 5 was the, uh, well, I counted the squares, but only because the squares are worth one. I got, I actually went from here up to here, and I say seven minus two, that's equal to five. And down here, I say four minus three, that's equal to one. So my rise, my rise is actually negative five, and my run is one. That's my slope. It's negative, or let me correct myself. Really, the correct way to write this would be to say 2 minus 7 equals negative 5 because you do final minus initial. This is my final. This is my initial. 2 minus 7 is negative 5. But you can also look at the line and tell that's a negative slope because it's pointing downward like that. It's a good question, China. Uh, as I said, you'll have questions similar to that. And Make sure you're prepared. Macy? Yeah. Where's Macy? 24. Enjoy. Wait, do you have a question about this one? Okay, we'll come back to you. Okay, we'll come back to you. Just remember your question. So 24 uh, vector has a magnitude of 12 and is 20 degrees above the x-axis. What is the y component? You'll have a question like this, right? You'll have two vector calculation problems. One is adding two vectors. The other is finding the x or y component. The magnitude is 12. The angle is 20. You don't have to draw a picture, but let's just do it. 12 units at 20 degrees. I want to know the y component. That's over here. Or I can draw it over here is fine, too. But to find that, I say the sine of 20 equals the y component over the hypotenuse, which is 12. And so my y component equals 12 sine 20. Hopefully you don't have to go through drawing the picture, writing out the sign, all that. You can just jump right here, maybe not even writing anything, and just doing 12 sine of 20. Uh, it's one of those small numbers. 4.4, 4.1. It is 4.1. I know it's a small number, by the way, because 
uh, this angle is small, and so I know that my Y component is going to be less than half a 12. Is that clear? Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. Joy? Okay, so you're going to have one of these too. You'll have one where I give you two vectors and you'll do a sum. It's going to be just like this, except the numbers will be different. Okay, so on these I find that it is useful to draw a picture because you can get tripped up with your components and their signs. Turns out that this one is actually uh, fairly routine. But I have 11 units along the positive x-axis. That's A. And then I have B is 24 units at 60 degrees. So something like that. This is 60 degrees. This is B. I find the x and y components of each. AX is equal to 11. BX is equal to 24 cosine of 60. And BY is 24 sine of 60. And you all say, why did you not put AY? AY is 0 in this case because AX is on axis. Then I add my x components, uh, 24 sine of 60 is 10.4, 10, 10 I just ran it off. Is that clear? Guys, some of you are in calculus, and you have your calculator in radian mode, but always for this class, you need it in degree mode. You all know how to change it to degree mode? If you... Uh, Go to mode, it's like on the top row of buttons. You'll see like radian, degree, and grads, I think. Switch it over to EPG. You have a TI. Make sure you're not getting these right. Come see me, I can help you switch it over. All right, we add our X components. So RX is 11 plus 12. RY is just 10. So these are our X and Y components, 23 and 10. Yeah, Maggie? I'm getting 20. Did I do it wrong? Oh, okay, yeah, I did 12 instead. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right, 21. I'm sorry. But make sure it is in, in a degree mode, too, because I, I've had a number of students come to my office, and they were getting the answers wrong just because their calculator is in, in radial mode, which you need for calculus, which many of you are in, but not for this class. You'll get it wrong if it's in this class. Okay, so um, now we find this should be 21 right here, right? Now, if we want to know the magnitude, we do the square root of 23 squared plus 21 squared. And that's 31 units. That's from the Pythagorean theorem. Another question that I could ask is, what is the angle? To find the angle for that vector, if I draw Rx, Ry, this is 23, 21. The resultant R is right here. This angle theta is the inverse tan of 21 over 23, opposite over adjacent. Uh, 42 degrees. I could ask you either one of those, or I could ask you both, but I'm just going to ask you one. I'm going to ask you either the magnitude or the direction of the vector. Joy, I think you asked that. Is that clear? Is that you? Yeah, good question. You're going to have it, so make sure you can get it. Chandra. On the solution video, the PX was 12, and I got 33, so. BX was 12. Is that what I had up here? Yeah, BX is 12. What did you get, 33? Can I see your calculator real quick? Oh, this is. 
you like if it was I could give you a, like a curve graph and ask you the velocity at any point. But not at a distance really like that. Is this useful for you? Okay, average velocity. So from a graph you could also I could ask you what is the average velocity. Here we're doing between E and H. Right, between E and H, that's between this point and this point. Really what you're doing when you're finding average velocity is you're finding the slope of that line. So I would just say this, my rise is from negative 16 to 15 looks like. So that's 31 divided by 6 to 11 divided by 5, so it's about equal to 6. So the answer would be 6 meters per second. B. Or you could do it a different way. You could say average velocity is equal to delta x over delta t. It's not really a different way. It's basically the same. But delta x over delta t, that would be x final minus x initial divided by my time. x final is 15 minus x initial, which is negative 16, divided by t, which is 11, minus 6, or 5 seconds. Uh, 31 over 5. So we'll have to know all these formulas, right? Or will there be... No, there's no formula sheet on this test. Um, I don't know, is that a formula? I guess it's a formula. I mean, like... Yeah. I guess, yeah, you'll need to know them. Let's just sort of recap what they are. I, mean, I say there are only two formulae. That's not really true, right? There are really more than that. But uh, the others I don't like to think of as formula. I like to think of as uh, definitions. And that's like the definition of average velocity. Hey, Maggie? Can you do 26 when you're done? Yeah, let me just write down these. So we had these. Uh, we had the whole sign. So I tell like you know all your trig stuff. We did have average velocity. So delta x over delta t. Um, you know your various area formulae for triangles and squares. Right triangles, half based on time. Um, well, that's it, I think. Can I think of anything else? I think that's it. There's not that many for me. For me, Lee. Maggie, which one did you say? 23. Okay. We might have time for one more question after this, so uh, let me know up here. Okay, you will have one of these, too. Okay, so make sure that you're able to do this. There are several mistakes that one can make. Uh, let me do it the correct way first. A, in that direction. Negative B, in that direction. And then the resultant. Oh, it's B minus A, yes. Thank you. B, in this direction. Negative A, in that direction. And then the resultant will look like this. That is that vector right there. What other way? Like the black arrow, you wouldn't go from the negative A to the top? 
No, you always start at the beginning and go to the end. I always like think of it as walking. I can walk this way or I can walk this way. They'll both get me from one point to the next, but I always start here and go to the end. You also do not do this. You do not draw B like this and negative A like this. And then it's confusing, like, which, which way do you draw it anyway? And you're not going to get the right answer. That's not correct. I always want to do it like this. Draw the first vector, draw the second vector. It is commutative, is that the word? You can do uh, B minus A is equal to negative A plus B, but we're not worried about that right now. So you can, you can switch the order that you draw them, but you always have to draw them zip scale like that. Okay, one more question I think we'll have time for. Oh. No, in the back. What's your name? Yeah. Yeah. Caitlin, number two, uh, what number? 21. And then uh, you can see me. Okay. We can go over 12 if you want. But you had already asked a question. Which one? 21. 21. Oh, good one. So a car begins at a velocity of negative 30 and ends at a velocity of negative 50. So that tells me on these position versus time graphs, my slope should be positive or negative? Negative. Negative slope? No. Negative slope? Yes. Negative slope? Yes. Negative? No. So I get rid of A and B. It's either B or C. Then I look at the value. It starts out with a small slope and goes to a big slope. Small slope initially? No. No. So big slope. Here, C is going to be the answer. I start out with a small negative slope and wind up with a big negative slope. And let's look at 12. Is, is that okay? Let's get 12 really quickly. Oh, uh, so this was very similar to what we've done before. I throw something up. It goes up and comes back down. Actually, you know what? It goes up at 30 meters per second. What's our acceleration? Negative 10 meters per second squared. Every second, it's going to drop by 10 meters per second. That's what that means. So if I start out at 30 meters per second, how long is it going to take to go up? Three seconds. It goes from 30 meters per second to 20 meters per second. 10 meters per second to 0 meters per second in 3 seconds. If you forget that, you can just say, well, V at the top is 0. It's equal to, this is 0. It's equal to V naught, which is 30, plus negative 10 times T. I uh, solved that for T is equal to 3 seconds. And so the total time then, if it takes 3 seconds to go up, the total time is 6, six seconds. But when you look at these, when they have nice round numbers, it starts at 30 meters per second, accelerating at negative 10, that means it's slowing down, it's dropping every second 10 meters per second. So it takes three seconds to come up. See, now your numbers in your head like that will help in the next chapter or the next part of chapter three. Listen, folks, have a good day. I'm around the next couple of days. So if you need help, uh, drop by. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There is a help session tomorrow at 12.55, I think. Is that what I told you all? Help session tomorrow. I'll send an email to remind you.